Joining us now is Oji Akpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, G, don't worry, don't worry. I got it right. <laughs> but you are doing very well. You are doing very I'm well. I'm not, and I don't understand what that Mr. means. That's Mr. Macaroni's voice. <laughs> Good you are morning. doing very well. Thank you. And you look excellent today. I uh -huh. love your gray jacket. Thank you. Please Thank wear you. this all the time. Oh, feeling good. It's like, I know, right? Yeah. Did you compliment him? Yes, I did. Perfect. Thank How you. are you? And you look glorious, Victoria. Thank you, darling. I'm having your hair. <laughs> well, good morning, Rafai. How are you? Oh, you Fisco. <laughs> How are you? I know which one. Number one. <laughs> Number one. Oh, How are you guys? I'm fine. You guys always Don't know if you are saying OG is number one. I'm not the jealous guy. See, see, see. Oh, so I love doesn't you guys. have number. He's <laughs> had infinitum. Well, good morning, Rufai. Morning. And good morning to you viewers. We begin what's trending following an outrage on social media over a request by the Federal Bureau of Investigation on the whereabouts of six Nigerians whom the United States indicted for cyber fraud over the weekend. The six Nigerians were among a list of 79 persons declared wanted by the U.S. The list comprised of 16 Russians, 20 Chinese nationals, and 37 Arabians. The Bureau, however, took to his Twitter page to single out just the six Nigerians on Friday, ignoring the other countries. Well, let's take some tweets. The FBI actually tweet, let's take that. Help FBI find six Nigerian nationals wanted on their involvement in business email compromise schemes, resulting in over $6 million in losses. I mean, $6 million is huge, but there are other people on that list. Let's take some tweet, Twitter reactions. One user wrote, really, FBI, are you also looking for the 39 men of Arab origin, Russians, or the 20 Chinese Asians on that list. When you highlight six Nigerians in this way, you paint the remaining 200 million with the same dirty brush. Please be kind to other Nigerians who are not criminals. Well, another user wrote, six of 79 is 7.5 percent, but the FBI intentionally posted an image that makes it look like the Nigerians are 60 percent of the wanted list. More shocking when you see big countries like Russia and China individually contributing about 50% of the list, how they use the media to shape our thinking. Well, finally, a user wrote, there are a lot of Nigerians doing legitimate businesses around the world, and it is painful because these few bad eggs keep overshadowing the efforts of others. That's why the FBI used those six Nigerians as clickbait, a deliberate attempt to ridicule the country. Well, this is awful. <laughs> but, I mean, when you look at the FBI tweets, you see that, you know, this, the, the, the six Nigerians were the latest um, uh, people that they added to their list. I think exactly. last week or the week before, they also highlighted the Asian nationals. But, you know, Nigerians are very sensitive with this whole scheme because, as you know, just last week, we had Hush Puppy, you know, trending all over social media, all over Dubai with, you know, this whole fraudulent allegations surrounding Nigerians. It's quite painful to see as well. I, mean, I don't I do think I it's painful or the, or the outrage is misdirected. The yeah. fact of the matter is there were Nigerians on that list. Yeah. I think racism is too important of an issue to be crying wolf in this manner. The FBI, if you could just even go to the top right-hand corner of that picture, you'll yes. see sought by newest. So that Correct. all this whole accusation of their, you know, singling out Nigerians and profiling Nigerians is simply untrue. Th that just happened to be the newest people. The newest By people, now, correct. there'll be a batch of newest people. Right. So this was really crying wolf. Well, I think it was more of the, you know, because of the hush puppy thing that it's just It's got nothing happened. to do with anything. I know, but that's We need really to address the fact that our Nigerian— outraged. No, but then the outrage is misdirected. Yes. Our Nigerian brothers and sisters should stop— embarrassing the rest of us all over the world and stopping cyber criminals. That's where we need to direct the outrage, as far as I'm concerned. Good point. No, no, you cannot Martin. be more correct. Thank you. You know, when it comes to an uh, <laughs> issue of crime, particularly yeah. in, whether local crime or international crime, it's not something that Nigerians should be uh, emotional about. Uh, it's not the patriotism of Nigerians that is being questioned. The FBI is just saying that, look, we have a prima facie case of these persons, and we need to investigate them and track them, help us find them. It's simple. Now, the kind of outrage that one would have expected would have been for the average Nigerian to say, look, these six Nigerians that have been identified as part of a long list, uh, 
they have disgraced Nigeria. Yes. They are a source of embarrassment to Nigeria. I haven't seen anybody on uh, social media that is very proud of Invictus or that is proud of uh, Hush Puppy. Although I've seen one or two persons trying to uh, argue for Hush Puppy. People should just know that there is an international syndicate, uh, international system out there yes. that frowns upon crime. And when you get involved in it, you disgrace your country, and then the long arms of law and justice will come after you. It's as simple as that. Good point, Rufai. I'd like your comment. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm quite very sad that people can still come out and say things like this, that, oh, they are trying to berate Nigerians and the likes. You did the crime. Let's not deceive ourselves. You see, what scares me the most about this country is the societal hypocrisy. People did this crime, and they should pay for the crime. And when the FBI comes out to say, oh, you did a crime, we're looking for you, Nigerians too should be in the vanguard and say, ah, this will give us a bad name. So if you know people like that, forward them over to the FBI. It's as simple as that. I don't like this uh, hypocrisy. I call it hypocrisy because, and you know why I say it's hypocrisy? There's a popular social media influencer that tweeted that, and I was, I was very appalled at that level, level of thinking by somebody I, I respect so much when I saw the tweets. Well, if they did a crime, they did a crime. Let us put them out there and let us rebuke what is bad. Righteousness well, exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach. Well, let me, let me uh, go back again to the point I had made earlier on this program about our value system. Yeah. Look, something has gone terribly wrong. Once upon a time in this country, uh, if you could not explain your source of wealth, if you could not establish that, you know, this is where you work, people will be suspicious. Yes. Families will even ask questions. Yes. Parents will even disown you. Yes. But now we have found ourselves at a time when you have a large population of Nigerian young men whose ambition is to just get access to a laptop and use it to commit crime. And, you know, publicly they are held. Nobody asks about the source of wealth. Nobody wonders what it is that they do on a daily basis. Yes. So the, the, the defense of uh, those six Nigerians is coming from that moral topitude, yes. you know, that uh, our community uh, as and, a country and, now and, faces. And, and well, we must here. also note that, you know, this is a very small percentage of Nigerians, Dr. Abati. I don't think it represents Nigeria in any way. Those yes, it doesn't represent Nigeria. That's not what I've said. That's not what he said. Yes, I know. I just want to Even think in the past, me. if you have one person living on the street, Correct. an able-bodied man who does not go to work, but he's also uh, is living uh, beyond his uh, unknown means, then people will ask questions. Yes, These but, days, we're not asking enough questions. And that's a message for those persons uh, defending Hush Puppy, saying that, well, he has not been found guilty, so people should leave him alone. So if that and, mentality predominates, and, and, then we have very serious problems. And, and, and these people were seen with him, eating with him in Dubai. Yes. And they were calling him Baba. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Let's well, call it speed is speed. And these people are move, leaving movement to lead people to Christ. All right. Well, let's, found with prof shots prof fire. <laughs> let's take another story. The, uh, your, the governor of Oyo State, Shei Makinde, has alleged that his administration went against the established land use rule in the state to give approval for the burial of Senator Abiola Ajimobi at his residence. The governor claimed that the family of the deceased had sought approval to bury the late former governor on a plot of land in Agodi Giare, but the request was denied because the land was under litigation. However, the governor allowed for the burial to take place at the deceased resident in Oluyole Estate, which is another property that is pro prohibited for burials in the state. The governor also stated that the deceased family did not follow the laid down protocols in passing information on the sickness and eventual demise of Senator Jimobi which his administration overlooked to allow full cooperation with the family. Meanwhile, the wife of the deceased senator, Florence Ajimobi, on Sunday accused the governor of Oyo State and his deputy of playing politics with the death of her husband. In a meeting attended by members of the Nigerian Governors Forum at the residence of the deceased, Mrs. Ajimobi claimed that the governor of the state never reached out to her even when her husband was hospitalized. Let's take a listen. The least anybody can do as a God-fearing person is at least to send me a word of encouragement at that time. And even after he died, no, not even do Mr. Deputy Claudio, 
Well, this has raised a lot of alarm on social media. People are just, you know, basically outraged that um, this woman has gone through a lot, and the only thing that the, the governor of the state could have done was to send some condolence ahead of time. So. Well, well, you, you, there are two stories that you yes. raised here. I find it alarming that a governor would say that he broke his own laws of his own state to accommodate anybody. Laws are laws for a reason. Nobody's above them. Because a former governor passed on does not give you license to break your own laws. What happens when other former governors pass on? They can now demand similar license. Then if former governors can demand that, then a teacher, then a doctor, then whoever. That laws are laws for a reason. I find that really worrying. But I do understand that it's sort of political expediency, because the passing of um, the former governor, Senator Ajimobi, has created uh, some tension between the current governor, Shea McIndy, and the family of late Senator Ajimobi. So I think that's him trying to accommodate them, but that's not the way to go about it. Laws are laws for a reason. Now, regarding the video with Mrs. Ajimobi, was she surreptitiously recorded, or was she aware that she was being recorded? Well, no. it, it, it's a it's a meeting. I don't think that she was completely aware. Well, that she was yeah, but so she, it's not unlikely it's, that it's not somebody exactly. will have she a, was aware she was being recorded yes. because I don't. I, well, I suppose it might be the seven stages of grief. Stage three is anger. That's what we're seeing there. She seems very angry. Not the typical portrait of the mourning widow. She's lashing out, which I suppose people do when they're grieving. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah, people uh, respond to uh, the death or the loss of a loved one in different ways. But in this particular case, the subtext is one PDP versus APC. Mm. I guess that the politics of the 2019 general election is what is uh, at play here, and also uh, people's uh, perception uh, that there was no love lost between Shei Makinde as governor and his predecessor in office. And then there's also the story of the building at uh, Agudijiare, uh, which, you know, some people reported on social media had been in contention with the state government. That, in fact, maybe the state government had seized that property, hence the litigation. And that what Mrs. Ajimobi is trying to do by having her husband buried there would be a way of, you know, claiming the uh, property. So there are some subtext to it. But I think that beyond all of this, um, the governor himself, if it is indeed true that he heard about the uh, death and he didn't reach out, because in the video that you showed, mm. uh, Mrs. Ajimobi was challenging the deputy governor, yes, who that's... eventually showed up uh, to condole with her. And she was saying, look, the governor didn't send any text message. He didn't make any phone call, not even a letter. Now, if that is true, then that's a very serious allegation. It doesn't look quite good. That's what I just said. Yeah, because the yeah. governor is the governor of everybody. And Correct. now that you have a former governor dying, uh, you should reach out. The explanation that the family did not reach out to the governor uh, may look a bit, a bit untidy. Yes. And I think that in the future, uh, you know, Governor McIndy should not allow this kind of situation uh, to arise. It doesn't cost him anything. Exactly. Even if it was a, a, a text message. Exactly. Now, somebody had made an excuse for Governor McIndy that uh, he doesn't have Mrs. Ajimobi's number. Now, I find that unbelievable. He can always get it. He cannot. I mean, he's, he's gone. Yeah, he's he's not the only, there were other people that were paying condolence. How did they get her number? Like, no, you know, I mean, I the mean, state government will even have protocol governors. people. Exactly. You know, he could even have sent an states. advanced delegation yes. uh, to the place. So we yes. should not play politics with Ajimobi's death. He has played his part. There are people who consider him a hero and who have praised him to high heavens. And then there are those who are using the opportunity to reassess his tenure in office. So when a man dies, uh, you know, some people will praise you, some people will condemn you. But the lesson of it all is that all of us should just be careful, you know, uh, what we do. Because okay. people will remember and they may react. Very good. Very well said, Dr. Abati. A quick comment, Rufai. 
All right, uh, Tundu, you raise a very important point. The governor has no right to break laws. If there are laws that, you know, doesn't permit you to bury somebody in their own private home in Ibadan, you have no right to, to break that law because you are setting a bad precedence. And for going forward, I know in Zimbabwe there's a place called the Heroes Acre where they bury heroes and legends and past presidents. I know there's Arlington in America. Why can't the governor just put, you know, and it's even going to be good for historical purposes, you know, where they can, maybe subsequent governors that might pass on in the future, a place where they can bury them, that students can even come on discussion and say, okay, the former governor of Oyo was buried here and that. Because that is the politicking area. We need to be very careful. Uh, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of rage, there's a lot of tension on ground. We know they are from both opposing political parties, but we need to be very careful. What is most important is the fact that a, a man died. A soul left this world, and we should concentrate on that. Uh, Governor Sheyi Makinde can extend the hand of fellowship. Uh, people can make mistakes. He might say it's a mistake or it's an oversight. He can say, extend the hand of fellowship. Go there, visit her. You know, visit her privately, not even apart from the media glare and everything optics. Let's not forget that we're human beings first before we're APC or PDP members, and that should play in our conduct. I Very like well that, said. especially because he died of a disease that is ravaging the whole world right now. We need to be sober about that. It's, now is not the time for politicking. But I have to go back to my earlier point about just the cavalier way that we break urban planning laws and just other laws in Nigeria. Right now, we're in the rainy season. We all deal with flooding. And all the time I think about, this is because somebody has built a house where they should not have built That's it. Very good this question. is because some politician has waived the rules for somebody that they know. We have to stop this. Very good point. Anyway, Let's take about the, the story. The point that uh, Rufai made about the cemetery as a public memorial, mm -hmm. as a way of uh, uh, social construction and recording history. Yes, I mean, it's done uh, in many parts of the world. And maybe it's something that we should also emulate here in Nigeria. But this isn't the case that there are also many Nigerians uh, who prefer to bury their dead at home. Isn't yeah, it a cultural like it. thing? Is it, is it also a religious thing? Yes, is it also like an emotional thing? Yes. And all you need to do, what the law requires you to do, is to get a permit. Because you can't just go and bury. Uh, away from the uh, cemetery. So we need to get more details about this. Could it be that Agodi GRA, there are certain designated neighborhoods in Ibadan where the governor, the state government will not grant a permit? You know, well, uh, actually, and apparently this that, that falls particular into that category. property in Agodi GRA was, is under litigation, which was actually started by Ajimobi, yes. apparently. So that's so why that's they, couldn't, they couldn't be buried there. Issue, yes. but it was buried elsewhere. According to the governor, right. he broke the law to accommodate him. I think that's the governor trying to show sure, yes. good even in, the other, even in the other GRA. But, the but, other yeah, GRA the other was GRA was an outright no, no because no. that is under litigation. So this yeah. other one... He broke the law to accommodate the Ajimobis. I think that's him offering like an olive branch to yeah, show. But, but what happens with people who just say, look, we want to bury our father at home? Oh, that was a Isn't question. Isn't it the case that all you need is just a permit? But, but I mean, but, if that Dr. land is prohibited from burials, then, you know, you, then probably, you, can't. Then you can't or you have but, to. But, I mean, that's the rule that he broke. That's what he's saying, by but, allowing the burial take place at his residence. But, Dr. Abati, you can't bury somebody in your house in Lagos now. Or is there a law to that effect? You can't bury somebody. So you have to bury a person in the cemetery. You can bury somebody in Lagos. It depends on the area. The area, but that's and the point. it depends on if you. Cool, yeah. No, I'm not making. in the. It depends on the area. It's, it depends. On according the to the urban planning laws, mm. there are certain areas where you can bury at home. That's All it does point. is that it decreases the value of your property, and if you're okay with that, then you go ahead. Okay. There are certain areas it is absolutely prohibited. But still, you okay. must still get the permit. Yes, Very you have to check. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's take another story. in Nigeria. Pastor Chris Oyakilume has stirred up yet another controversy. Aside from his earlier claim that 5G technology is the cause of the new coronavirus, the pastor now claims that Black Lives Matter protesters want to implant microchips into American citizens and the rest of the world. In a televised sermon on Sunday, the pastor accused the protesters of trying to get rid of the police in order to carry out a plan. Let's take a listen. Riots. It's not about the guy that died. It's not about black folks. It's not about Black Lives Matter. I'll tell you what it's about. Now look at from protest to riot. And then more people have died since then. And the call 
for disbanding, abrogation, cancellation, defunding of the police. Why is that? You think it's limited to the United States? No, it's not. Why are they doing it? It's part of the game. I'll tell you what it is. It's simple. Because they want to come in with the alternative method for security. What is that alternative method for security? The total control with the RFID uh, microchip. That's what it's about. And so you're going to find cities getting rid of their police and then experimenting just one little city after another. The city says no police. Everyone must get the microchip. And with that, you're going to know everybody. Everybody will know everybody. They're going to know everyone. And crime will be controlled. And they've got the media to help hype it. I mean, this is absurd. I don't understand how religious leaders will ah. not leave these things alone. Well, you know what? Pastor Chris's claim comes in the heels of former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani's viral interview with Fox News last week when he claimed that Black Lives Matter protesters were participating in organized anarchist networks whose ultimate goal was to destroy the U.S. government. Let's take a listen before we come back for a full discussion. Well, uh, over this weekend, it should be quite plain to every American who can see through the propaganda that Antifa, Black Lives Matter, the communists and their allies are executing a plan they wrote about four or five years ago. Just go back and read what they wrote in the manifestos that they wrote, including Black Lives Matter. They want to destroy our government. They wrote then they want to do away with the police. They want to empty out the prisons. Uh, they want to internationalize our government. They want to do away with our system of courts. And they want to take your property away and give it to other people. This is a orchestrated effort. It is no longer a protest about Mr. Floyd. Right. That ended a long time ago. Th this is a, an anarchist, organized anarchist, supported with a lot of money. We had outbreaks in about 30 cities over the weekend. There were well over 100 people wounded with guns and 25 Americans killed over the weekend. Now, yeah. That didn't happen accidentally, Laura. That's part of a plan. And we better wake up to it, and we better stop being silly. Uh, people who say they're favorable to Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter wants to come and take your house away from you. They want to take your property away from you. Yeah. They want to let criminals well, out no. of prison, all criminals out of well, prison. Groups, they are groups, groups that are aligning themselves. And they're anti-American. Rufai, I heard you cracking up with... <laughs> Pastor Chris, or Yakila Mestorianis. I'd love your comment on both of them real quick, I mean, where, where should I start from? <laughs> uh, this is the white supremacist agenda in America, and I'm not surprised. I'm sure he probably watches Fox, and he reads Breitbart a lot. Uh, past, dear Pastor Chris, I love you so much, and I appreciate you, sir. But the truth has to be said. If they wanted to dominate and take over the world, Pastor Chris, they would have done that on your phone. Your phone has a geo-mapping that can track you anywhere in the world. So they don't even need to put a chip in your hands. Dear Pastor Chris, they can do it on your phone, and they've had that already mapped out. Also, dear Pastor Chris, the world is evolving. The first, the first subdermal chip was put in somebody's hand way back 1994. In fact, there's a story I read that in Sweden, a lot of people are putting their bank details on subdermal chip, and they are using it for banking transactions. So it's the new technology of the world. So please do not be afraid about the chip, my dear Pastor Chris. Just know that if they wanted to take over the world and police you, like you said, they could have done it on your phone already. There's everything to, to monitor you on your phone. <laughs> and please, let's stop reading bright parts. I read it a lot. There are a lot of, fair, a lot of funny things on it. I mean, I don't know how you can read it, but you know, well done to you. I, I try to read fair it sometimes. Fair-mongering run amok and just completely bonkers conspiracy theories.
Well, uh, Pastor Chris Oyakilome seems to be fascinated with uh, conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. The problem with conspiracy theories is that oftentimes when you subject them to the text of truth, uh, they tend to fail woefully. Uh, first, it was uh, Pastor Chris Oyakilome talking about the uh, 5G uh, technology. And of course, he misled his congregation, he misled people who listened to him. And this time around, he's come up with another conspiracy theory about microchips. Now, I, 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 I guess, you know, maybe uh, he, he, he solves the Internet a lot and he just picks up whatever, you know, uh, fascinates them without double checking. You know that there was also this story about the microchip, about uh, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, giving a certain deadline and that went viral. But later, of course, that was uh, disclaimed that there was nothing like that and that even the signature by Boris Johnson was not uh, valid. Now. The pulpit is a very powerful platform. Yes. When you use the pulpit, you have a cap captive audience. And I think consistently when people go to uh, Pastor Chris or Yekulume's uh, church uh, or they watch him uh, online, uh, they themselves have a personal responsibility to double check what he tells them. Because there are many people out there who believe that the pastor cannot make a mistake. Mm. There are people who refer to pastors as their daddy. Uh, or they call them whatever. They think they have a special telephone call to God and that they are all-knowing. What Pastor Chris Oyakilome has consistently demonstrated is that you can also project ignorance from the pulpit. <laughs> and, you know, the, the caveat emptor is buyer beware. beware. Right. <laughs> and in the last week, it's not just uh, Pastor Chris Oyakilome that we need to be concerned about. There's also uh, Bishop David Oyedipo of the Living Faith Church, who was just saying that uh, in Nigeria, in Lagos and Ogun State particularly, the two governments are not addressing the challenge of uh, coronavirus. Uh, that they are not fighting coronavirus, that they are fighting the church. That is an anti-virus agenda, an uh, anti-church agenda uh, that you have in Lagos and Ogun State. And uh, is, the, is the devil, according to him, uh, that has taken control in these places. Now, that kind of rhetoric from the pulpit is not helpful. <laughs> if the video Yedepo wants churches to be reopened, I mean, he's distinguished enough to get access to the state authorities, to engage them, to make his own contribution, uh, rather than uh, labeling the, the government uh, agencies that are trying to protect all of us as uh, agents of the devil. He says there is healing in the church, but uh, you cannot find healing in the uh, markets. Now, that's a matter of faith and belief. Mm -hmm. We should respect science and the position of government. As for Rudy Giani, the thing to say about it, what, what went wrong with him? He used to be a very smart lawyer. <laughs> I, I have no yeah. idea, Dr. Abati. But now, as, I, I, as he's I, getting I'm older, as he's getting older, rhetoric. you know, he, be, he has become an, a master of gaffes. Yes. And I'm not surprised that he, he made that uh, statement on, uh, on uh, Fox News, mm. where some of the anchors oh, of have been making uh, similar statements. The other day, he, he was engaged in a shouting match with uh, Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain. And now you show him on uh, Fox News now uh, making uh, what you can consider white supremacist uh, statements. That's his home. Fox <laughs> News. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who knew he was this bad? Anyway, Rudy thank Giuliani you. of thank September you very much. 11th. OG, thank you very much.